Hey guys, it's Alex Hager here, and today we're taking a look at the top five cameras you can get for under $1,000. Now, all of the cameras on this list are great. You can't go wrong with any of them. However, some are better in some fields than the others, so maybe one of these will be the right fit for you. Starting off this list, we've got the Panasonic G7. It's uh, well under $1,000 with a kit lens, 4K recording. It's got a ton of incredible features, so let's take a look at some of those. The Panasonic G7 features a 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, 4K at 30 frames per second, 96 frames per second at 1080p, an articulating touchscreen, and a decent kit lens for under $600. Now that sure is a lot, so let's take a look at the pros and cons of this Panasonic G7. The first great thing about the Panasonic G7 is the sleek design. Some people don't really like the form factor of the Panasonic G7. I happen to really like it. It's lightweight, it doesn't feel too plasticky. I thoroughly enjoy it. But what it's mostly known for is that sharp 4K at 30 frames per second. It's what I'm filming this video on right now. It looks stunning. I absolutely love the video quality of this Panasonic G7. Moreover, if you're taking photos, it's got a great electronic viewfinder, so you can see what your photo's gonna look like before you take it. And the slow motion capability is decent at 96 frames per second. And this camera is a great choice for self-recording with a beautiful articulating touchscreen. But the best part about it, you get all of this for under $600. But let's take a look at what the Panasonic G7 could do a little bit better. Now first off, the Panasonic G7 autofocus is definitely not perfect. It's very finicky, and if you've watched my videos, you'll see plenty of parts where the camera goes out of focus. At 60 megapixels and with a sensor that isn't very big, the photo quality is not going to be phenomenal. For background to foreground separation, there isn't going to be a lot of it, and the ISO performance isn't going to be very good because it's not letting in as much light as like an APS-C or a full frame sensor would. Lastly, the battery life certainly isn't that impressive. Although it may be a little bit better than the Sony offerings, the battery life is significantly worse than Canon or Nikon. That being said, for under $600, the Panasonic G7, despite a few of the quirks, is probably the best camera value under $1,000. Next up, we have the Canon 80D. The Canon 80D is sporting a beautiful 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, a killer 45 point autofocus, decent video capability, and the best lens selection around. Let's take a look at what makes this camera awesome. With an incredible, affordable lens selection, you can easily elevate the photo and video quality with some great glass. The autofocus is going to show significant improvements over the Panasonic G7, and you're also going to get an awesome articulating screen. With a bigger sensor, you're going to get better low light performance. It's going to let in a lot more light, it's going to make your foreground look a bit more defined, and your photo quality is going to be superb with the 24.2 megapixel sensor. The Canon 80D probably has the best battery life on the market as well. It has about 900 shots per charge, and it's an absolute beast. It's not bad for sports either, shooting 7 frames per second. Let's take a look at where the Canon 80D falls short. The first is the deal breaker for me, and that's no 4K. Although not everyone is shooting 4K yet, I love to push the limits of video resolution, and this one doesn't do that. Even though you will get some limited slow-mo at about 60 frames per second, you're not going to see the 3840 by 2160 video resolution. On top of that, it is very large. For me, this isn't a con, but I know for a lot of people, they're looking to make their camera as compact as possible, and this camera certainly isn't that. While the Canon 80D might be on the more expensive side on this list, it offers tons of options and capabilities for hybrid shooters who are looking to take stellar photos and videos. The Nikon D5600 is Nikon's answer to the Canon 80D. While I personally prefer the Canon, let's take a look at the pros and cons of this camera. Most of my comparison here is just going to compare it to the 80D because I feel like most people would decide between these two cameras should they stick with the DSLR. So the pros of the Nikon D5600. It's lighter than the ADD, so if you're looking for something a little bit more compact, although this is going to be bigger than a mirrorless camera, the DSLR, it is lighter than the ADD. The D5600 is also fulfilling Nikon's great reputation when it comes to dynamic range. The dynamic range on this Nikon is going to be superb. On top of that, it is $400 cheaper, which is a huge chunk. So if you're on a budget, the D5600 could be a great choice. So where does this camera fall short? Well, it's going to have less autofocus points, it's going to shoot slower at 5 frames per second, it has no headphone port for monitoring, and the battery life is not going to be as good. That being said, it's still going to be better than the mirrorless options. While the Nikon definitely seems to fall short of the ADD, it's still a great hybrid choice for under $1,000. 
The Sony a6500 is likely the most powerful camera money can touch for near $1,000. First of all, the Sony a6500 has a stunning 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is gonna be similar to the one you'll find on the ADD. The low light performance on this camera is unmatched. High ISO photos and videos still turn out beautiful. The Sony has superb 4K video quality, which is actually downsampled from 6K, so you get to retain some of that awesome quality and it's the fastest shooting camera on this list at 11 frames per second. It's also incredibly small, so with the compact form factor, the Sony a6500 is really easy to take with you. The autofocus is also impeccable with the 425 point autofocus. Not a single camera on this list can focus as well. And the in-body image stabilization is unparalleled. IBIS is an industry leading image body stabilization. While this camera has some incredible features, it definitely has its fair share of cons, namely battery life. The battery life is absolutely atrocious on the a6500. Although the camera is small, it has a very clumsy design. The buttons are in weird places, the menus are hard to navigate, the screen doesn't articulate, and it's not a touchscreen either, which for me is a huge downfall. On top of that, it is the most expensive on this list, and the lens selection is also gonna be incredibly expensive with the Carl Zeiss lenses. If you can put up with the cons of the acclaimed Sony device, the a6500 might just be the best on this list and it is an absolute beast for your money. Lastly, let's take a look at the Panasonic G85. Consider the successor to the Adore G7, the G85 adds a few nice touches. Since this camera isn't worlds different than the Panasonic G7, this one's gonna be pretty short. Let's take a look at the pros. The Panasonic G85 is going to add image stabilization to your Panasonic G7, so this is really important, especially if you're a vlogger. Also, it's going to shoot faster at 9 frames per second, and although I wouldn't consider this camera a great photo shooter, it's definitely going to do better in that area. While the G85 is a great camera, it doesn't address the actual cons I have with the Panasonic G7. So for me, the Panasonic G7 is still my top pick. Hopefully this helps you find the best camera for under $1,000. Personally, I think these are the best five you can get right now. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.